we're going to continue on with chapter two, but um, I want to I want to pull up something before I do that. Make sure I'm on the right page. I put this on here just in case. Uh, I think some people have asked me about their um, either their Blackboard account or their um, uh, email account. I'm, I'm you know, and I'll send I'll send an email with this too. But I, underneath the announcement, I put a, a tab for tech support. So if you're having a problem with either email or um, your Blackboard account, or actually there's other things too you can look at. If you just click on that and it'll say submit a ticket. So if you're having problems with you know something in Blackboard's not working, something in your email's not working, uh, you know, it's other stuff here too. X O, you know, what if, basically if you're having trouble with any of those things, uh, submit a ticket and um, the, uh, uh, the the tech people will take a look at it and, and they can resolve quite a few things. So I, just an example, when I came here, they uh, my email account was really bad. <laughs> it kept deleting everything, which um, makes things exciting when you're, you know, your boss sends you stuff and just delete it. But they, um, uh, but they, they fixed it pretty quickly. So again, if you, uh, if you're having, if you're having difficult, and, and it doesn't have to be Blackboard, but it could be anything. Um, right underneath the announcements, it'll be, it's on there. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna send, I'll send out an email shortly. Which if you have a problem with your email account, that may not be the best way to you know to access it. So if if you have a problem with your email account, uh, maybe go through Blackboard to uh, to submit the ticket. But um, anyway, so if if you are having problems, that's going to be it. Excuse me, that's going to be it there. All right. Any question on that? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, it's kind of weird, and I'm not sure what's going on with um, with the Zoom stuff because. Uh, by the way, just so you guys know, my my Zoom meeting, my Zoom meetings are my own. I basically, pay for the service because it's uh, more reliable than uh, going through. I, I found it to be more reliable than going through the school. So, um, and, and part of my reason for doing that too, not for this class, but for other classes, that a lot of times the classes are all at night. It seems like we have more problems at night because I think it was a maybe more of a bandwidth problem or something. I'm not sure, but anyway, um, yeah. Hopefully it uh, it'll work out. All right. Uh, so today, oh, I didn't, I didn't do today's classes yet. But well, today is basically the same as last time. Uh, well, I'm not going to start chapter two. We're going to continue with chapter two, part two. <laughs> And uh, we'll see how far we get. I'm, I'm making a mental note. I'm not going to keep you guys over. I'm not going to keep you guys late. <laughs> That's my new goal. Uh, not, not keep them late like I've done. I think every day except one. All right. So let's go ahead and pull up the um, thing. And, and just to kind of reiterate, I, I know journal entries are just wacky, so you, you, you know, Kind of going over why we do it this way is um, somewhat important. It, journal entries, as I, like I said last time, is basically people would just like in a journal, just like in your diary, you'd write in what are you doing? You know, today I went to the park and, and whatever. Um, same thing with uh, with businesses. They used to write down all their, you know, what happened, you know, sold uh, whatever to so-and-so on this date, so-and-so lit. Back then, they didn't really have account numbers. They just they list out where, what someone's name is, where they lived, all that kind of stuff. They'd all be in there. And um, yeah, and that's what they did. It, it was more of a, accounting was more for you know, what we call nowadays, uh, you know, scribes or uh, English people would be, you know, English teachers or whatever would be more of, along the lines of what you would do if you were an accountant. 500 years ago, 400 years ago. And it's, it developed into a shorthand. And it developed into, okay, if we just want to record the transaction, what do we really need? And that's when we came up with, uh, you know, just 
take out two accounts um, and or how many, how many accounts you have usually it's, usually it's two it could be three or four but was this the um the handout for last class this is the same handout as the last class yep exactly the same I'm, I'm just kind of reiterating why we're doing it this way because it is wacky um you just take out two accounts and do the pluses and minuses of it now here's the quirky part now that would be really easy to do the quirky part is that they came up with a system of debits and credits which just means left and right it doesn't mean anything other than that to us and so that's the hard part is getting the pluses and minuses into this debit credit thing that's most students have no problem doing this take picking up the two accounts and saying whether or three accounts whatever it is and saying whether they increase or decrease the students just generally don't have a problem with that the problem comes from figuring out the debits and credits and so that's why we um, are kind of going over this we're going to slow because it makes a difference as to what type of account it is it's an ingenious system and that's why we still have it it's for you know 400 years old and we still use it if it, if, if it you know if someone came up with something better in the last 400 years we'd be using that but no one has and so that's the problem with this method is figuring out what goes into the debits and what goes into the credits the pluses and minuses people generally are fine with but it's the uh, other stuff okay so let's go to number seven. I guess we did. Yep. And, and, I, and like I said last time, we're going to go slow with this uh, chapter. And we're going to slow with this chapter because of what I, I kind of said. Is that it, it, it's kind of wacky. And it's and my guess is that, you know, people have, you don't have seen this before. <laughs> um, 400 year old shorthand is. Not usually something that people see too often. Okay, so let's take a look at number seven. So number seven received cash from a customer previously billed. So we sent them a bill earlier for five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me try that again. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Okay, so question is, what two accounts do we need? Cash and accounts receivable. Perfect, yep. So we're getting cash. And we build them previously. So we set up an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable again is when somebody owes us. So we set up this accounts receivable saying, okay, you owe us this money, right? So when we set up that accounts receivable, this is them paying off that accounts receivable. This is them saying, okay, I know I owe you $500. Now I'm paying you that $500. Okay. Oops. Okay, so the cash account is it going up or down? It's going to increase because you're receiving the money, right? So Correct. I'm looking up to see how I did it up here so I don't prove it up. Okay. Oops, I went too far. Uh, yep. So our cash is going to increase. Okay, so it's going to go up. And then accounts receivable is going to increase as well because that's money coming to you, right? Actually, think about this for a second. Do they still owe us five hundred dollars? No. No. Oh. Uh, no. So we're going to decrease this account. Now, don't get me wrong. We're happy. We're, we'd rather have the cash, right, than like than somebody owing us money. But uh, they no longer owe us this money. So this is when somebody owes us, and so if they're paying it, they don't owe us that anymore. But we're still very happy <laughs> to get the check. Okay. Uh, I don't know if going to this debit credit thing is more confusing or not, but it's. Um, Oh, this one's gonna be 
tough to do. How do we get this game out? Okay. Um, please, uh, give me one second here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, Emerald, I know this is a bad uh, workaround, but if you go to, um, it's the same one as last class, Emerald, but if you, if you go to uh, handouts and go down to chapter two, handout part two, and, and by the way, that's for anyone who, who didn't get the email. And, and, and by the way, uh, uh, make sure you, uh, be sure to fill out a ticket for the email. But um, yeah, so go down to, um, go into handouts class handouts, I guess it is, class handouts, and then go down and that, but well, it is the same one as last class. Uh, by the way, one more thing I should mention to you guys, when it comes to tech stuff, I'm in the same boat you are. And what I mean by that is um, I can't, I can't fill out a, a, a ticket for your account for, for obvious reasons. Um, so if, if there's a problem with your Blackboard account or your email account, I can't, I don't, I don't have any powers over Blackboard or email. So, and, and, and neither do your other instructors. So um, if, if you're having problems with it, go ahead and, and uh, yeah, fill out the tickets. And, and, and they're pretty responsive, they're pretty responsive to it. But yeah, if you didn't get the, uh, if you didn't get the, um, the handout, uh, go to class handouts and then go down to, um, but, but it is the same one we used last time. So if you were here last class, it should be the same. So account uh, chapter two handout part two. And if you want the debits and credit ones that I'm looking at right, you know, I'll be looking at a second here, that, that's there too. Okay, uh, let's see here. All right, so. Um, Okay, so this one kind of looks like this. We have cash going up. And accounts receivable will be going down. So cash will be a debit and the uh, accounts receivable will be the credit. Okay, so these are both assets. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, okay, so uh, on May 12th, so that 512, two accounts we have, cash is going up, so it'll be a debit, it's increasing. You do not need to put in what I'm going to put in next. So it's an asset, it's increasing. So that's not how you spell increasing. Five hundred. And over here. Asset decreasing. Okay. 
and you do not need to put that post. You do not need to put that in. Well, this is all you really need is this, um, you know, the account. And that's the kind of beauty of this thing. You really just need these two accounts and same with their debits and credits, and that's it. How do we know if it's a uh, debit or credit? It depends on the account and if it's increasing or decreasing. So, oops, let me, let me get that. So, it, it, you're looking at these here, you know, they say, okay, if it's, if it's increasing, so cash, let me see here. So, the cash account is increasing. And the accounts receivable is decreasing. So what type of accounts are usually credit accounts? Uh, excellent question. It could be almost any of them. It depends on whether the accounts are going up or down. Is there some type of... Um, I guess wording, like you know how we have the payables, like some type of wording that'll let us know that it's a, a, a credit. Well, here's the thing: it really, it, it, you have to kind of go. It's kind of a two-step process. You have to first figure out what kind of, of account it is, and whether it's increasing or decreasing. And then you got to go to kind of filling, you know, the table here. For instance, an asset, if it's going down, will be a credit. If it's going up, it'll be a debit. So an asset could be either one. So accounts receivable could be either one. Cash could be either a debit or a credit. So if it's going down and it's a credit? Yep. If it's increasing, it's a debit? For assets, yeah. But now here's the thing, if it's a liability, it's just the opposite. It goes down with a debit. Right, because you owe somebody money, right? Well, it, it's going to decrease the debt. That means you're paying them off. Okay. okay. Credit means it increases. It, it, you know, and, and this is this is actually this is the hardest part about the accounting and especially debits and credits. And I, I admit it's it's strange. It works, but it's really strange in that it's um, you know the debit and credit thing. And the debit and credit things don't mean anything other than left and right. You know, don't think about debit card or credit card or anything like that. But um, yeah, so. Um, it, it, you, the first thing you have to do is figure out what kind of account you have and then whether it's increasing or decreasing and that will tell you whether it's debited or credited and any given transaction it could be either one of those you know depending on whether it's going up or down Can you keep that up for a second so I write that up mm -hmm. yeah and this is, at the, this is at the end of the handout this is also the separate one I sent that says debits and credits handout Yeah, so in this case, um, I don't know if I can write it here or not. Yeah, I think I can. So the cash should be going up. All right. And the accounts are receivable is going down. And notice that, you know, if you're looking at our balance sheet, this is still balanced, right? If, it, if one asset goes up and the other asset goes down, you know, nothing happens over here. We didn't have to do anything over here. And that's, again, part of the beauty of this method is that you don't have to worry about the other accounts. We don't, you know, if this had nothing to do with liabilities or equity, we don't have to worry about those two things. So for the one that we just did, you know, the cash is gonna go up, it's gonna be a debit and the cash receivable, also an asset, is going down. So you need to figure out where it fits in the thing here. And again, if, uh, if you have an account that you're not sure whether it's an asset or not, you know, you, you find an account, whatever the account is. Something we haven't used, I don't think we've used prepaid yet. You know, what is this prepaid account? What is that? If you go up here, 
um, you know, you can find the account and see what what type of account it is. So if you're looking for prepaid, you hit, I don't know what that is. Um, if you look on this second to last sheet here, it'll, it'll show you what the um, what, what the account is. I got most of the usual most of the usual accounts are in here. Right, some wacky ones that aren't, but. And, and two, I, uh, um, I'll say one last thing and then I'll be quiet about it. But the nice thing about debits and credits too, that there is one thing that's good about debits and credits. And that is, if you're sure about one of them, you know, if you're sure, okay, I know that the asset's going up, I know it's a credit. I just said that wrong. <laughs> as it, as, uh, cash is an asset that's going up, I know that's a debit then you know that the other side must be a credit, right? So if you're not sure about the accounts receivable, let's say you're unsure about that one. If you know that the cash is a debit, then the other one has to be a credit if you only have two accounts anyways. So there is that thing kind of built into this that in a, in a weird way, once you kind of get a little bit used to it, it's almost difficult to make a mistake. Do they happen? Yeah, they happen. But um, it's, it makes it much less likely, I guess. Yeah, because you know if you have two debits and no credits, it's, it's not right. So. Okay, uh, number eight is exactly the same as number seven. It's just a different way of doing it. Customer paid cash. Where's our account? Okay, so our account, our cash is going up. Accounts receivable. Okay, so uh, so even if you didn't, you, know, you, know, you can't remember exactly what to do with accounts receivable, you can still make this journal entry correctly. Let's say that you, you only really, uh, you know, cash, you know what to do with cash. Cash is going up. Okay, so cash is here. And, and, and I, I don't know what accounts receivable was. I can't remember. I, I don't feel like looking it up right now. Okay. If you know one of them, you know both of them. So cash is an asset going up. Maybe I just do this. Oh, don't do that, Mark. Something correct. Okay. So if cash is going up, $100. So so if I just know one side, I got the, I got the journal entry. Because this must go on the other side. Even if I don't know, where it goes in, you know, this thing. Um, Can I think of it as a hundred dollars is being credited to the accounts receivable, so they no longer owe you. Yep, a hundred out of whatever the numbers. Yeah, yeah, and, and that is the way um, you know that you definitely should should look at it. They is decreasing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying, but I, I, and I guess this is the point I was trying to make, though, though, that even if you didn't know, you know, I got this accounts receivable, I don't know where it's going up or down. I can't think about it. Okay. If you know just one of them, you can make the journal entry. So if the only one that you know is cash, yeah, 
if this is the only one you know, you can still make the journal entry correctly. So even though it's difficult, you know, that was impressed, if you just get one side of it right, the other side, you know, will be right also because these, these have to equal, you know, these two have to equal each other. Now, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it would be that this is decreasing, absolutely. And so because it's decreasing, it's still an asset, but it's decreasing. They no longer owe us. Hey, how do I fit in on this one? I didn't do it on the other one. All right. And so, yeah, so this would be um, the other half of it. So it's going to increase the debit, decrease the credit. That's for the um, assets. Okay, let's go to number nine. Now nine is a little bit tricky. Paid off few the accounts payable. Okay. So what two accounts are we going to use? Cash and accounts payable. Yep and yep. Cash definitely. Cash is going. Cash is going up or down? Down. Down. And by the way, when you see the word paid, uh, think cash. You know what did you pay them with? You paid them with cash. So whenever you see paid, paid for inventory, uh, paid the phone bill, paid whatever, paid employees. What do you pay them with? You pay them with cash. So this this word paid is kind of a magic word. It's not magic, but it's it, 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 just, it indicates that there's going to be cash. So, so this will be. Is accounts payables going down because you don't longer owe them that money? That's exactly right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Good. So our cash is going to go down. But now also our liabilities we no longer owe them this money and that will be going down also. So cash is going down and accounts payable is going down. Okay, so so here's where you have to start doing this organization. And this is and this is kind of why I started out with the financial statements where we did um, all these first is that um, you know, you have to know where, where this goes. You have to know what, what kind of account cash is. You want to know what kind of account accounts payable is. Okay, so. Cash. There's an asset and it's going down, so it'll be a credit. And okay, doesn't matter. Accounts payable is a liability. And it's also going down, but you'll notice that the liabilities go down with a debit. Okay, I'm gonna start out with a debit first. If you put the credit first, that's absolutely fine. So accounts payable. It's going down. 
by four hundred dollars. So we no longer, oops, we no longer owe four hundred dollars. And cash is also going down. It's an asset. Yeah, so this is sort of like this. Uh, so, you know, the accounts payable is the debit. Cash. Again, weird system. But it works. So, and, and again, if you could get just one side of this. So, if you just know the cash part, and you, know, you know, the accounts payable doesn't make sense to you or whatever. If you just know the cash is decreasing and you know the cash decreases with the credit, well, then you know what the other side is. Whatever's on the other side must be a debit because these two have to equal. Okay. Now, another great thing about the system, though, is that even though we have to fit it in these categories, the nice thing is that there's only five categories. And, you know, that's um, every crazy transaction you can think of. Traded land for stock for and, uh, services or whatever. You know, it'll fit in there. Okay. Um, made a payment towards mortgage payable. Okay. Uh, what did we probably pay them with? Credit? Probably not. No. Well, 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 we, well the mortgage payable is, is I, I, I know what you're saying, you're right. It, uh, because you can't pay, you can't pay your mortgage with cash, right? No, no, you're you're, you're going to pay with cash, but the cash will be a um, a credit account. Maybe be credited. So the payment for the mortgage payable, the payment will be in cash. You know, you send you write a check or whatever. And they'll, you know. So this is uh, cash. And the cash is going down and the mortgage payable is what we owe. So we're paying cash, we get payment and we're gonna pay off some of this mortgage payable, whatever, who knows what the balance is. And for, for this, this transaction, we don't need to know what the balance is. We just know we paid off a thousand of it. It's kind of similar to the other one we just did. So the accounts we're gonna have are cash. Cash and liability, right? No. How come it's not a liability because it's a mortgage? Uh... Well, the mortgage payable is a liability. Yeah, so. Uh, what is the confusion? So the mortgage payable is a liability. <laughs> the cash is an asset. So it's sort of like this. So there's two accounts being impacted here. Cash is going down. We're writing a check. Cash is going out. The other side of it is, what did you write the check for? You know, if you wrote out a check for a thousand dollars, what did you write it for? And that's where this liability comes. We wrote it for this mortgage payable. The mortgage payable is a liability. So we're paying off that liability. So our assets are going down because we're paying it. 
or, or you know, we wrote a check, we have less assets now. And then down here we have a mortgage payable and that is going to decrease with a debit. So there's always, you know, they, they design to call this the double entry system. It could actually be more than two entries, but it has to be at least two entries that if, if something goes out or comes in, you know, a plus or minus on an account, something else has to be impacted or else you know, the balance sheet's not gonna balance. So cash is going out, but our liabilities are also going down. So, you know, even though cash is going out, which is kind of a bad thing, uh, the good thing is we owe less money now. So liability is going down is uh, usually a good thing. Okay, so cash is going down. Oops. And uh, mortgage payable. also going down. So these are both decreasing. So yeah, cash going down, mortgage payable going down also. So I don't know, let's make up the numbers for mortgage payable. If we owed $10,000 on the mortgage payable, we now made this payment, we only owe 9,000, right? It's decreasing the amount that we owe. Now, if we're just writing down the transaction though, we don't need to know what the balance is in the account. We don't even need to know what the balance is in the cash account or the mortgage payable. We're just gonna write down the transaction. Okay, so we have cash, which is an asset. And mortgage payable. is a liability. And they're both decreasing. So we're going to have so cash is going down, it's decreasing. All right, so make me trace it. All right. So cash again, then uh, I'll write so the asset going down. Okay, so cash. Are those yeah. flips? The cash is a, a credit, right? <laughs> My gosh, you're right. I did this absolutely backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's thank you, thank you, thank you for catching that. No um, that would have been very bad. <laughs> I don't know if our teacher really knows accounting. <laughs> All right. Ooh, uh, let's see this. Try that again. Okay. 
I, I sincerely apologize for that. Uh, yes, the um, the debit is the mortgage payable. And the credit is cash will be the credit. It's more confusing, but um, yeah, so I, I, I apologize. Thank you, and thank you for catching that. Uh, the So mortgage payable is going down. And so is the cash. So they're both going down. If you think about our balance sheet, we have cash and assets are both decreasing by a thousand. And again, the cash, we maybe were a little sad about losing the cash, but we're also happy that we're, our, our liabilities are less now. We don't owe as much. Yeah, and, and by the way, if you guys ever see me do anything, anything stupid, um, uh, please let me know. Don't. Uh, um, it, it does happen sometimes. Someone will come up to me after a class or something. Usually in the classroom, someone will come up and say, "Well, why is this like this?" I said, "Well, it's like that because the teacher's an idiot, put it on the border on." All right. Uh, number eleven. Purchased equipment on credit. And this is a little bit confusing because, you know, don't, this credit is not the same as the uh, credit in the account. So what accounts do we need? Equipment and accounts payable. Good. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. It's this way it's written. Um, So our equipment account. By the way, if we're doing this one, I'll I'll show you why they call it purchased it on credit. <laughs> you probably figured it out, but it's credit because credit is something you have to pay back, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah, it's credit, but it, it, it actually has to do with the general entries there. Okay. So let's see equipment. Uh, oh. All right. Is the equipment going up or down? It's increasing, right? Yep. So equipment's going up. We got more equipment now. Here's the tricky one. Is accounts payable going up or down? Decreasing. Oh. Yep, perfect. Oh. So it's going up. Okay. So okay. now say, well, what does it mean to say you know, that you're buying something on credit? Well, uh, let's look at the equipment, the equipment here first. I'm jumping ahead. So equipment is an asset. And accounts payable is liability. Okay, so equipment's going up. It's an asset. Will it be a debit or credit? Credit? Debit. 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 Yeah, so if it's equipment, if it's increasing, it'll be a debit. So, you know, I should, I should have this too. Okay, accounts payable, if it's going up, will it be a debit or credit? Credit. Okay, now you can see why they say if you buy something on credit. Ooh. If you buy something on credit, it's because that account gets credited. So when they say you're buying something on credit, they're saying it because accounts payable will be credited. You know, in other words, you're not paying cash. Now, why don't they say they're paying on a debit? We can't, I don't know. But uh, for whatever 
you know, reason. You know, they say they pay on credit just because you credit that account. So, yeah. Okay. So, and, and, and when someone, you know, if you have a customer that buys something on credit that they owe us, it's for them, it's the credit. Yeah. So, purchase office equipment on credit. So let's see what I'll do next. Okay, um, equipment. <laughs> Make sure the debit, it is, okay. Um, so it's an asset. And accounts payable. It's a liability. And it's also going up. We owe more people. And when they say they're buying on credit, that's because of this. We credit that account. Bought something on credit, this accounts payable. There's some kind of a payable. It could be a no payable, it could be a loan payable or something like that. Question on that? Okay. All right, number 12, purchase supplies using cash. So what accounts do we need? Cash is cash and supplies is an account, right? Yep. It is? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, So supplies, you know, whatever it is, um, paper and cash. Uh, I know why you asked that though. The the um. Uh, about the supplies because as we will find out in chapter three that when we first purchase them they're an asset when we use them up they get expense you know, they go, it's if they left the place okay so we bought the supplies using cash okay so are the supplies you going up or down oh. oh, and the cash down, okay. increase. Yep. So cash going, uh, excuse me, supplies going up, uh, cash going down. Okay, so these are both assets. I'm going to jump around here a little bit. Um, so coming down here, sort of like this. Uh, cash is going down. And, you know, so we wrote a check. We said, okay, well, we should write the check for, and we wrote it for supplies. And both So it kind of like this. You know, so our cash is going down. 
our supplies are going up. And again, you know, if you uh, use this sheet, uh, this is at the end of your handout. Look at this thing. What page are we at? Seven. Okay. If you all the way down to the end of the handout, it's here. It's down here too. But it's also in a separate handout I sent out. Um, Way back in the day when we used to go to class, um, we used to have, you know, you, we would, it was probably easier back then, to be honest, because you'd have the, you know, the charts next to you, and then you'd have the handout, and you could easily look over and put them in. It's a little bit more tricky to do that on a little screen now. But. All right, so actually, I'm going to, I'm going to put this in there. Supplies first, then cash. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just fun watching me learn how to use a computer. That's a, all right. There we go. All right. So supplies are going up. So supplies are going to be the debit. June 12th. Again, if you put cash first as a credit, that's absolutely fine. The actual order, I, I know in the books they tell you that yeah, you have to put debits first, and I just do it just because the uh, so it's not confusing as far as what people are reading the books. But uh, there really is no rule on which one comes first. The uh, test, if you put. Or even on your handout, if you put the credit first, I don't care. As long as, long as the credit's the right credit, it's fine. So as long as you, you know, as long as you um, credited cash, that's fine. Oh, so cash is the credit. So again, yeah, you know, the pluses and minus people are usually okay with. It's this debit credit thing that really throws people. And it is frustrating. It's frustrating to say, okay, I, I just want to know which, you know, It'll just be a chart with this one thing. It's not like that, but because you have to know what kind of account it is and whether it's increasing or decreasing. And once that happens, then it, um, you know, once once it, uh, you kind of get used to using it. Uh, there is a kind of genius to it that it makes it difficult to make an error. You know, if your debits equal your credits, I don't know, ninety nine percent of the time you're okay. It could be you picked the wrong account or something. But generally speaking, well, you know, and 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 two, and, and also, if you just get one side of it correct, that's all you need. Because if you if you know if you only know that the supplies are a debit, you don't know what happens to cash. It has to be a credit. If you know this side's that, if you know one's a debit, then the other one has to be a credit. So it really does make it almost I don't say impossible, but it makes it more difficult to make it an error if you you know with this debit and credit system. It's wacky, I admit, but you know, it's, uh, it does work. Okay, uh, what time we got? Oh, we're still late. All right, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna, this will be the last one we do. Then we'll call it a day. Uh, I think everything is due on Friday, which is tomorrow. And after tomorrow, I'll put up uh, the, um, uh, well, it'd probably be like Saturday because I didn't give people a chance to turn everything in. But uh, it'll have your grade to date. It'll have your test scores. It'll have the extra credit points added in. And it'll show you your grade to date. Um, uh, that, that should be done by Saturday. How many of these is it? I'm sorry? How many uh, things to turn in? How many problems are there? On, on what, the exam? 
on this on this uh in this handout? Um, yeah. 20 something, 28 maybe. 28. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we, we had a ways to go. And by the way, you know, this is one of those things again, uh, if if you think we're going slow and you know, some of you may have already caught on to it, but it's hard. I mean, and quite honestly, though, the more time we spend here, the rest of the class goes faster. You know, so if, if you think that we're, you know, this is slowing down the class that we're going, you know, we're, we can take three days to go through this handout. Actually, it's not. In the end, it'll speed it up. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and do number 13 and then we'll, we'll call it a name. Okay. Issued common stock. Now, issued is another word for sold. So we sold part of our ownership, ownership in the company. You know, we didn't sell a product. Someone said, hey, I'd like to invest in your company. Said, okay, well, we'll sell you some stock. Okay, they go, oh, okay, and you agree on a price and how much stock and all that kind of stuff. All right, so the accounts we're going to use are what? Common stock and cash. Yep, and yep. Okay, so. Okay, so common stock and cash. This is a tricky one. So we issued, we sold stock to somebody. Some say, hey, I want to invest in a company. You say, sure, we'll sell you some stock. And we say, you know, for $4,000. So if we sold it, does that mean that they gave us the money for the common stock? They gave us the money. So would that mean that our cash went up? Yes. Okay. I'm confused at this <laughs> Yes, so our cash increased. Right? They, they bought ownership in our company. They gave us the cash, and now, and, and by the way, now it, it, you know you say, well, what do they sell? What do they, why do they sell stock? Well, one of the reasons they sell stock is to get cash, and you know we we, you know, we need money to run the business, to expand the business, to buy inventory, all this kind of stuff. So. One of the places they can get money is by selling the ownership. So the cash, you know, the cash coming in is actually, you know, probably the motivating factor. If they didn't need the cash or anything like that, someone to buy, like, you know, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> we don't need your money. Um, but if you do need the money, uh, you sell the ownership. You know, one of the things you can sell, you get money in the place. And the common stock, and this is one that this is one that's a tricky one. So. Increase. Increasing, yeah. We have more owners now. And it could even be the same owners. It could be the same owner bought more stock. You know, one of the more owners bought more stock. But whatever it is, the ownership has increased. There's more ownership in the, in the business now. Okay. So what kind of account is common stock? It's an equity and it increases with credit? Yes, and yes. So common stock is an equity account. And cash, we've had cash a million times so far. Maybe not, not a million, maybe half a million or something like that. Okay, so. Uh, common stock, as you correctly said, increases with a credit. Okay. The cash will increase with debit. Yep. And and again, if you just knew one of those, you know, maybe you just know the cash is going up, and you don't know what's going on with the common stock, you can still make the journal entry correctly. Cash is debited, you know what's on the, whatever's on the other side is going to be a credit. Okay, so 
Let me get it, let me sure I get it right. The debt is going to be cash. All set. And pound stock is also increasing. This is a kind of wacky one. It's an equity account, but now we have more. We have more owners now. We have four thousand dollars more owners now. Oops, oops, oops. And again, you guys, I, mean, I can't overemphasize it. If this seems wacky, it should be. It's the first time you're seeing it. It's probably the first time you've seen uh, assets, liabilities, and equity. Um, it's the first time you've seen these wacky 400 year old shorthand for writing down transactions. So if this seems unfamiliar, it should. <laughs> um, it, it, that's a wacky thing. It, you know, it, some people have, have, com have compared, um, you know, it kind of be some kind of wacky language for writing down transactions. And it kind of is. You know, it's almost like learning a wacky way. If, if, you know, if, if you talk to, you know, if someone's bilingual, they'll tell you, you know, that the, the order in a sentence is different, you know, from different languages and they have different punctuation and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of the same thing here. You know, it's, it's kind of like a different language and that you know we don't call them pluses and minuses we call them debits and credits and they don't always mean pluses and minuses it isn't like it's a one-to-one -one. it's you know it's uh nuanced by what it um you know, what kind of account it is any questions on this okay so uh we'll stop here Pick up next time. <clears throat> okay, I just want to talk a little bit about turning this stuff in. I, I know nobody have turned it in. I actually didn't look at the thing today, but I'll, uh, I'll get on that. Um, so turning in the uh, assignment, the, the, so they're due tomorrow. If you don't get them in by tomorrow, don't panic. You can still turn them in, you can still get full credit. The only thing that it will be appearing is that your grade to date will not show those items until you turn them in. So obviously, if you didn't turn the test in, I can't put a grade in for the test, right? You can still turn the test in, though, and I will put the grade in. It won't be marked late. It won't be, a, you'll get full credit for it. But it won't be in your grades until you do turn it in. So don't ever think, gee, the due date's passed. I can't turn it in. Yes, you can. You can turn it in right up to the last day of the semester. I'll take it. But it won't be in your grades, obviously. Now, a word of warning, as you've probably already noticed in this class, things build on each other. It's hard to do journal entries if you don't know the, the financial statements, if you don't know the, the assets and liabilities and equity. Right? It's difficult to it's difficult to know if you don't if you know if you don't, you don't know the you know where, where the cash is an asset, for example. It's hard to do a journal entry. So they kind of build on themselves. So I would strongly suggest that you don't leave it until later. Um, just because it, uh, it they, they kind of build on each other, especially these first these first four chapters. Really, you know, it, it, we're kind of doing them in an order to uh, they kind of build on each other. So I strongly uh, encourage you to turn it in as soon as possible. But again, and this is for any assignment, not just assignments that are due on Friday. For any assignments, the due date is simply the date that it's going to be posted in the grades. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, it, when I first put the assignments on, they're in an account called assignments. And later, they get put into two different categories called handouts and um, exams. Handouts and exams actually have grades uh, put to them. So what happens is I change the um, assignment from an assignment to either an, a handout or an exam. 
and then it goes into your grade. Exam uh, handouts uh, are 20% of your grade handouts. Handouts includes practice exams and, um, and any text problems that you would do. So those would be in handouts. Those are 20%. The exams are 80% of your grade. My, my reason for, for making emphasis on this is that the exams, you know, make sure you get the exams in. You can miss a homework assignment or two or whatever and still get a very good grade in class. You can still get an A. It's impossible to get an A if you miss an exam. So make sure you get the exams in. And there is no penalty if you don't make it to the, you know, by the due date. Just make sure you get it in. It won't be in your grade until you do. Simply because I can't, if I don't have a test, I can't, I can't enter a grade. So uh, any questions on that? Yeah, I emailed you, uh, not emailed, I submitted and emailed you my uh, exam, the one you told me to do again. I just okay, want to- I'll, I'll take a look at it. I, I honestly haven't looked at any, um, any anything today. All right, cool. I, I apologize for that. A, I, my, I have a kid that works at FedEx that's having a problem with their phone. I say, okay, well, big deal. Well, goes in at three in the morning. And if you don't have a phone, getting an Uber <laughs> you know, to go in, it doesn't drive. So uh, yeah, three in the morning, you know, and then picking it up. So anyway, but then you were gonna get the phone problem worked out. But anyway, I, I, did, I, I haven't looked at anything in, in, uh, this morning. I, I usually do it before class. And then I also do it usually on Fridays, but um, yeah, so I apologize, but I'll, I will definitely take a look at that. And let you know. Oh, and I also uh, resubmitted the homework. Okay. White. Good. And another thing too, if 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 on your homework or um, or even have even done this on an exam where someone's forgotten to do a problem or something on the exam, but if there is a part that's missing, you can still turn it in. Another thing is that on the um, uh, on all of the assignments and the exams, it's unlimited submittals. So if you turn in the wrong handout. You, you still go back in and turn in the correct hand up. There's not a problem. And I, I you know, I, you probably wouldn't know from what I did today in, in the journal entries, but uh, I, I can usually figure out what, you know, what's going on, which one is, you know, um, to update and all that. The, usually the last one is the one I look at first. And usually that's the, la the last one is usually the correct one. Um, so, um, yeah. So don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, if, if you submit the wrong thing or, you know, you don't have to ask me to, Un unsubmitted or anything like that. Just put in another one. Uh, you probably already answered this, but um, for the exam or whatever, can we print it out and like do it there and then submit it like through pictures or? Absolutely. Okay. The, the exams, you can turn it in any way you can turn the other ones. You can, you can do, you can print it out and do it that way. You can do it on notebook paper. Uh, if you're doing a notebook paper, make sure you actually put, you don't have to write, you don't have to rewrite it on the notebook paper again. And this is for all of them. You know, whatever form you use, um, you can write on notebook paper. Make sure you put the answers in, you know, A, B, C, and D. Sometimes you have people forget to put in the multiple choice questions or something like that. But um, yeah, and you can submit it on notebook paper and then take pictures of it. So I'm fine with that, you know. Any way you can turn it in showing that you did the work, um, I'm, I'm okay with it. Thank you. We have to turn in uh, the chapter two handout. Like, do we have to finish the rest of the problems, or is that next class? Oh, for this one that we're doing? Yeah. No, no, no. It, that, the one that we're doing, you don't have to turn in. And even the one we did last class, um, I'm probably not going to put that into the grades until next week, just just because it chapter two stuff all kind of goes together. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know I put the due date for the chapter two. I, I'll, I'll go in and change it. I'm going to change the due date. Actually, I'll do that right now. I'll show you that. So let me uh, turn it here. Uh, I'm going to make that. I'm going to change the due date on this till next week. The, the, the part one. So you don't have to worry about that one. You guys didn't see what I just did. I didn't. <laughs> anyway, let's do the 24th now, the, um, the chapter two, part one.
And so this will be chapter two, part two. And we're, again, we're not done with it, uh, this one. So you don't have to submit anything for this. So the only thing that has to be submitted is the chapter one stuff. Any questions on that? And, uh, and, yeah. Sorry, you just, I, I had to come to class a little late today. So you said that you, everything that we went over today, um, we'll just get back to next week and we're ending at question 14 or 15 or wherever we're at. I think it's 13, yeah. And then also, I'm sure you already said this already, but uh, as far as the um, exam goes, I, I thought I submitted it, but I just realized that I didn't. Um, so I just did now, but did you, you said you preferred that through email? No, no, no. Uh, through through Blackboard. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and again, as I know some of you are having problems with your email and Blackboard. Um, and let, let me do that. I, I know I told you before, but let's go through this one more just just to be sure. And that is um, in Blackboard. And I, I just put this in, so don't. Um, if you go to or here where it says Roosevelt Tech Support, if you're having a problem with your email or Blackboard, you can't submit something. You're not getting your email. Whatever the problem is, if you go to this email, Roosevelt, uh, uh, Roosevelt text with support, you just click on this, it'll take you to submit a ticket. And if you're a problem with Blackboard, you submit a ticket. But, and just tell them what you're doing. You know, like someone said, told me that their submit button isn't working. Let them know. You know and and, and they, they usually are pretty good about it. If you have a problem with your email, I'm not getting my email or my email is not opening or whatever it is, let them know. And by the way, it, just so you guys know, I know that some of you, this may be your first semester at Roosevelt, everything goes through Blackboard. So if you have a problem with Blackboard, get it fixed as soon as possible, because it's just going to make, it, it's going to reduce the headaches a lot. And same thing with the email. Um, make, make sure you check your email. Uh, the emails are um, kind of the way that it just, everything gets sent out via email. And if you're a business major and, you know, or a restaurant major, whatever it is, or, or cooking, um, just so you know, business still runs on email. I know you guys use Facebook and all that kind of stuff. For the most part, most businesses, it's all email. So just get used to checking it um, you know, daily. You can also have it forwarded. There's, there's ways to have it forwarded to your account. But so Blackboard and email are the two, you know, that are probably the most um, used. If you have a problem with either of them, submit a ticket. Um, and again, they, they, as I mentioned earlier, mine was kind of messed up and uh, they, they fixed it. Um, I mean, so um, anyway, uh, if you, again, that's in Blackboard, uh, tech support. I'll probably send out an email on this. Yeah, I will send out an email. I'm just going to write that down. I'll send out an email, an email on tech support. But um, now, if you have a problem with your email account, you may not get it, but, but it's in Blackboard. Um, okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Hey, look, I'm ending on time. All right. Uh, so I will see you guys on Tuesday. We're going to, don't, you don't need to do anything else in the chapter two handout, just get the chapter stuff, chapter one stuff in. And uh, if you have any questions on it, you know, go ahead and email me and we will go from there. Questions? Okay. All right. Oh, thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Oh, I will. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Actually, you know what? I have a question. Yeah. So I just now noticed I got a little notification on my phone that, uh, Chapter two, handout one. Uh, yeah, handout one. Is that um? Is that what we're working on right now? No, that's because I changed the due date. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I was just a little confused. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and, yeah, and, yeah. It sends out notifications. Out, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice night. I will. You too.